The Cardinals have their new manager in Ali Marmol, and the press conference showed that they have a lot of confidence in Mr. Marmol. Breaking down my thoughts on the hire, the press conference of the announcement, as well as your thoughts on the new manager of the St. Louis Cardinals on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals. Your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome in to Locked On Cardinals for Monday, October the 25th. Happy Monday, everybody. I am Lucas Smith, host of the show. Thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen of the day. A little bit of a delayed episode release today due to the major announcement made by the St. Louis Cardinals, and that is Oliver Marmol is the new manager, the 51st manager of the St. Louis Cardinals in their long tenured history. And so I wanted to, to kind of think on the on the move as well as watch the press conference that w- was aired today on a, a variety of social media platforms. I watched it on KMOX's Facebook page. Um, so wanted to kind of Think about the move, watch the, the press conference, see what they had to say, and then also give you guys time to share your responses on Twitter, Instagram, and as well as one email that I will share as well in today's episode. Thanks for tuning in today. Let's go ahead and get right into it. This is not a move I expected to, to come. Even after the, the Mike Schilt firing, I did not expect it to happen this quickly. I understand why it did. You know, man, uh, Teams want to have their managers in place very quickly so that they can get going for the prep 2022 season. I've got some quotes to share. I think that once Schilt got fired, it was pretty clear that it was either going to be a Stubby Clapper or an Ali Marmol promotion. You know, there were some intriguing outside candidates, a Skip Schumacher, Matt Holiday, and some of them might still be considered for Oliver Marmol's uh, old position of bench coach. So I wouldn't rule out either one of those two becoming Cardinal coaches, but I would rule them out to becoming Cardinal managers because the, the manager position has been filled by Mr. Marmol, and it's one that the Cardinals seem to be extremely extremely thrilled with both Bill DeWitt Jr. and John Mozeliak talking high praise for Oliver Marmol and for good reason. I, you, you you could really argue that this was the hire that they were going to make from, from day one of Schilt's firing. Uh, they, they were still pretty vague on the, on the Schilt reasoning. Uh, they said that there were some internal differences that they didn't see that they could work out. Mozeliak said that he, he felt that the best option for the future of the franchise was to part ways with Schilt and move on in that direction. So or move on from that direction, excuse me. And that's what they did. And I think that this is definitely a move that, that, that could have some positives to it. I mean, Oliver Marmol has has basically dealt with Mike Schultz at only in a short amount of time. Mike Schultz was not drafted by the Cardinals to play, but Oliver Marmol was, became a coach at the minor league level, managed the minor league level, became a coach at the major league level, and is now a manager at the major league level. So you have to wonder whoever the bench coach is next. Maybe they're grooming him for a possible managerial position because that's what happened with the last two Cardinal managers, Mike Schilt and then Oliver Marmol. But the the, the, the kind of negative side or the, the other side of this is you could argue or one could argue that maybe Mike Schilt was just looking for his, his man, his yes man, somebody that, that agreed with him more. And yes, you have to have some sense of continuity from the front office down to the manager and you have to have some agreement. But I think that from John Mozeliak's comments today, and I'll talk about this a little bit in segment number two, that he was very clear that Marmol and he claimed that managers in the past have gotten autonomy from, you know, autonomy to make their own decisions in game. Yes, there's a script. Yes, there's some collaboration among the two, and the front office will do their best to try and help the help the managers coaching staff to to make the best decision possible. But at the, at the end of the day, it will be an autonomous decision made by Oliver Marmol as to who to go to in the seventh inning, who to go to in the eighth, you know? But I think that at the end of the day, we knew this was going to be somebody that, that was hired that agreed with Mosaic a little bit more than Schilt. Is that fair? Is it, is, is it, is it, is it right? Who, who's to say, you know, but I think that at the, at the end of the day, we knew this was happening. And I think Mosaic got his man. At the end of the day, Mozeliak got his man in Ali Marmol. The Cardinals got their man, and I'm really excited for this move. I think that Marmol can, can be kind of a, a transition piece from the, the success we've seen in, in the last recent seasons to the future. Because Marmol even said, quote, we're, we're going to prepare for a championship. Anything less the, than a championship is a disappointment, end quote. Championships start with a championship attitude, and I am not saying that Mike Schultz did not have one, but it is clear that Oliver Marmol does. 
Marmol from the, the comments and and from 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 reading and from from just in, in watching what what has unfolded seems to be the kind of guy that is going to integrate baseball traditional uh, viewpoints and integrate them with the analytics and the tools, as John Mozeliak refers to them, that are at his disposal to make the team as best as they can be. I think that I'm, I'm excited for the lineup construction that Marmol is going to bring. I th- I'm excited for the bullpen management because Marmol managed a few games this season whenever Schilt got ejected and made some pretty pretty good decisions with the bullpen, uh, pulling some guys a little sooner maybe than Mike Schilt would. So maybe Marmol's bullpen management is better. And a lot of times that is the mark of a good manager. But this team is set up well. This team is set up well. And if if the decision to, to fire Mike Schilt, or since the decision to Mike Schilt, fire Mike Schilt was made, you had to bring somebody in that, as Mosella referred to, it was going to bring in as seamless a transition as possible. So from that standpoint, it made perfect sense to hire in-house because you would imagine that it was pretty solid continuity, pretty solid uh, closeness with the, with all the coaching staff after a successful season or a moderately successful season. So you have to wonder, or you, you would have to imagine that, yes, this does make the most sense because the, the, the manager or the, the front office wants a manager that the players can rally behind, that the players can be motivated by. And as a bench coach, you're doing a lot of motivating. You're doing a lot of, yes, decision-making, but you're doing a lot of motivating and you're doing a lot of, of getting the players fired up and ready to go. And this is somebody that the Cardinals can, Cardinals players can, can get behind. Marmol Mar- Mar- already talked about that. He has reached out to some of the core players, Goldschmidt, Arenado, Molina, Wainwright, and they seem excited. The, the, the support from Armal internally seems to be through the roof. And this is exactly what we saw at the beginning of Mike Schultz, Mike Schultz hiring. Oh man, he's such a good communicator. He's really a player's first manager. He's all this, he's all that. And I think that maybe there, there, there was some premature excitement over Mike Schilt and that wasn't sustained just because of um, didn't always agree, or at least you one, one, one would infer, didn't always agree with John Mozeliak on certain analytical points or the tools that he could use or what have you. But Oliver Marmol seems to be vetted from the get go and, and groomed from the get go to be Mike Schultz or to be Mike Schultz's successor and to be the manager of the 2022 Cardinals. And that's what it is. That said, John Mozeliak said multiple times that he was shocked at this that this had to happen because he did not expect to be naming a new manager on October 25th of 2021. He didn't. And he was asked the question, did you see this happening when you got on the plane to leave Los Angeles on that wildcard game on Wednesday, October the 6th? And he said, no, I, I did not think that on that night. So this, this came together really quickly, but also the thought process and the the time thought was, was very deep thought according to John Mozeliak. And just a note on Mozeliak real quickly. I think that, one could argue, and I'm kind of of this state of mind, that you could argue that, that, that this hire is going to, in a way, define John Mozeliak's tenure. Because he's had his pick now at three managers. And the first two, while Mike Matheny went to a World Series, Mike Schultz made the playoffs every year, he was a full-time manager, have not worked out for whatever reason. Mike Matheny didn't win. Mike Schultz didn't agree with John Mozeliak. You, you can say what you want to say about why they didn't work out. Bottom line, they did not work out. John Mozeliak fired both of them prematurely before the contract was up in the middle of the season for Matheny. So this is his third time around basically handpicking a manager. And yes, I agree that Mozeliak, I would hope anyways, that he did his due diligence and looked outside the organization. He said he did, and the, the outside candidates were considered, and it wasn't just, okay, my mall's waiting in the wings, let's fire Mike Schill. And he said that that was a factor in being okay with firing Mike Schill because you had Marmol ready, but that was not the driving factor. And I believe him when he says that, but it also leads me to believe that this was a position for Marmol. This was Marmol's position to have after Mike Schill. And Marmol now has this position. Oliver Ali Marmol has this position. And if this doesn't work out, it'd be, it would be hard for us for me to trust John Mozeliak to make another managerial hire. I'm not saying if Marmol loses that Mozeliak needs to lose his job or anything of that nature. I'm not, not making that claim, but this is the third time in a row that Mozeliak has picked the manager by hand. Like he has been able to pick the manager, hired Mike Matheny after Tony Russo's departure. Mike Schultz was John Mozeliak's choice to uh, interim and extend. And now Ali Marmol. Marmol, you know, if I were Mozeliak, I might be feeling a little bit pressure as to the success of the team, but also I'd be feeling pretty good because I think this team is destined to be successful for years to come, and especially in 2022 with their players and the possible of buying in the offseason. I think their window of opportunity 
is hitting its height right about now in 2022 with the players they have on their team, especially as Goldschmidt, Arenado, Wainwright, and Molina start to age out a little bit, particularly Wainwright and Molina. But Marmol's success, I think, will be a key factor in Mosellock's tenure. And it will be a key point when we look back at Mosellock's tenure. Because you can look back and you can argue nitpicking of, yes, Mosellock didn't do a lot of trade deadlines outside of 2011. He didn't do a whole lot of moves. But at the same time, Mosellock got Ozuna, that was a very successful move at the time. He got Goldschmidt, he got Arenado. Those three big ones were huge with St. Louis. The orchestration of the 2011 trade deadline to get Dotel, to get Sapchinski, those were huge moves. Edwin Jackson was a key piece in that trade and a key piece in that World Series championship team. But this managerial hire, that, that could be the third fail in a row, if it does fail, and I don't, I don't think it will, I think Marmol will be successful, could be a, a defining factor in Mozilla's tenure. That said, I'm very excited about this move. I, it could be me being excited about this shiny new object but uh, in Ali Marmol, but I, I don't see a whole lot of positives because the, 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 low, the, the risk involved, in my opinion, is Mosellock's um, perception and the perception of how John Mosellock is doing. But the, the, the risk in terms of management, I think, is low because you have to have good, good, um, good feelings and, and, and good excitement about this, this team with Marmol at the helm because Marmol has seen success. He was a coaching staff on the 19, 20, and 21 playoff teams. He was a successful manager in the minor leagues as well, but a successful coach. He's been around. He knows what he's doing. So I think that this reward could be pretty great. Uh, then there's a comment uh, that I'll share in a little bit from you guys that low risk, low reward, and I can see the the rationale behind that. But I'm overall excited for this move. Uh, you know, for, for when any and whenever I'm, I'm a team makes a move or a hire or news breaks, they have to be overly positive. I think the Cardinals were doing that. Um, and I'm not saying I completely buy it, but I'm saying I am buy it, uh, buying it at least a little bit that Oliver Marmol is their man and they're happy with that decision. And they, they, they express nothing but gratitude and, and an excitement for Oliver Marmol in the press conference. So I'll share some of uh, my, my thoughts on the quotes that Marmol and Mozilla had in the press conference coming up here in segment number two. Uh, but before I do that, I do have to take my first break. And I want to tell you about how I can help you solve a problem because the Cardinals claim to have solved their managerial problem. They hired Marmol to hopefully fix their problem. But if you have a problem like, like this... I'm going to help you solve that problem. The problem is you've got one device to catch a game live, another to let you stream your favorite TV shows. You've got sports highlights on your phone and your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. There's now a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together, and that's called Direct TV Stream. It brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch all your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. Super convenient. No more juggling remotes. No more need to buy another device ever again for a special streaming circumstance. The best part about DirecTV Stream, there is no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter today and get rid of the confusion today and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. More at directtv.com. Again, more information can be found at directtv.com. Compatible device required. The content does vary by package. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen of the day. Again, apologies for the late release, but I wanted to kind of to, to hear what the press conference had to say and, and what Marmol and Mozeliak had to say. So we're going to go ahead and get into a little bit of what they had to say. Um, Mozeliak came in with his opening statement and, and and basically kind of laid out the reasons of as to why Marmol was hired. I'll talk about Mozeliak's comments and then Marmol's comments. He said, Marmol un- understands what we're trying to do here. Uh, what they're trying to do as a Cardinal organization. He said that he's interested in baseball values and modern baseball tools. You know, that they, they've still been very vague as to what the differences were with Mike Schiller. And he, he admitted that. I don't he didn't necessarily apologize, but he admitted that, that they, they have been vague on, on the, the fire. But based on the comments today, you would have to think it was Schiller's reluctance to use analytics or Schiller's, um, stubbornness for lack of a better term to only use traditional baseball tools and to, to kind of be stuck in the ways. And I'm not saying that that is true, but that, that, that's what one would infer. You know, I, I, I still think that Schilt did use some analytics. You know, it, it's hard not to use any sort of analytics in today's baseball game. You almost have to, or else you wouldn't be able to, to have a job or to, to be successful at all. Um, and, and Mosellac said that he felt the best path forward was a change in the organization. He claims that it was not taken lightly, that it was one of those things that they, they thought about very deeply about, but Marmol rose to the top very quickly. Uh, he's excited about the hiring of Marmol. He said that the entire organization 
is really high is really exciting. I think that, that that's the big thing that stuck out to me is that you know DeWitt kind of kind of said, well, it was more of Mosellock's differences that allow or that, that, that caused Schilt to be let go. So it wasn't really me. It was Mose and his camp. But then DeWitt was fully in on Marmol. He wasn't skeptical on his comments. He was very excited about the leadership skills that Marmol could bring. So this entire organization is very excited about the 51st manager in Cardinal history. Um, and and Mosellock was very clear that he is going to be able to bring his own voice into this position. That's huge because because the, the narrative right now across the media is that uh, you know the, the the old way of managing baseball is gone. And they talked about this in the press conference that it's the front office managing now more so than the actual manager. I think Mosellock kind of did his best to, to dispel that. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but that's kind of the narrative being shared right now. Is, is that it's it's uh, the decisions made in game are coming from from the, the very top brass, the front office and down, and that's how the man the game is managed today. I don't really think I agree with that. I think that, that there is sort of, sort of there is this sort of autonomy from the manager's perspective. And Mosellac talked about the fact that he's going to give Marmol some sort of autonomy. Um, that there will be some collaboration. That's the key here. Mosellac was very open, and so was Marmol, about how this is going to be a collaborative effort. Mosellac and the company seem to be more excited to collaborate with Ali Marmol more so than they do or than they did with Mike Schilt. You know, I'm not saying they weren't excited about Mike Schilt. They, they gave him the full-time job. They gave him a contract extension, all these things. So I'm not saying that they weren't excited about, about it, but they, he, he seems more excited to collaborate with Marmol than he did with Schilt. And that's human nature. You, you would like to collaborate with somebody more than you would like to collaborate with somebody that agrees with you more than you want to collaborate with somebody that doesn't agree with you. That's human nature. That, that is what it is. And, and I, I don't really fault Mosaic for that. Again, the, the the firing and, and the way it went about with, with Mike Schultz is definitely questionable. Don't get me wrong. Well, that's human nature, um, and I think that he 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 made the human nature decision and wanted to work with somebody that agreed with him more. And this seems to be Oliver Marmol. But at the same time, he's been very clear that Marmol is going to get his own voice. He's going to have his, his own leadership, his own autonomy, and be able to make his own decisions. I hope that's true. I, I really hope that's true. Um, you know, and Mozilla kind of said point blank. Quote, we're, we're hiring him to be the manager. So he's going to have some autonomy, end quote. You know, you you, you would hope that, that the, the some autonomy is actually a lot more than just some. Um, but I think that um, <laughs> at, at the end of the day, Marmol is going to need autonomy to manage. I think anybody who is hired to manage a professional team or coach a professional team needs to be trusted enough to have autonomy, to have their own decision-making process. Yes, obviously, you know, John Mozeliak is, is Marmol's boss. Like the front office is Marmol's boss, so he has to listen to them to a certain degree. But a part of being a manager is being able to make your own decisions, to keep your players accountable, to, to use the tools uh, necessary to to win, both the eye test and analytics. It's a balance. Um, and Mozeliak said that the front office at, for St. Louis does try to be progressive and use tools, but he, he, they try to give the clubhouse autonomy. Um, so that they know how to make decisions. And he, again, like I mentioned, he does not agree with the narrative of the new baseball, new way to manage baseball in terms of how it's just a front office and acknowledged again, the, the vagueness in Mike Schultz firing, but he wanted this today to be about Oliver Marmol. Is that deflecting? Is that ignoring the problem? Maybe, I don't know. But the bottom line is he wanted to celebrate Marmol. And I think Marmol was celebrated. Every time there was a question asked, it was a congratulatory thing to Marmol because all Hollywood was very clear that he knows that this is, this is not a, a an opportunity that he takes lightly. Not a lot of people get to manage in the Major League Baseball, and not a lot of people get to manage the St. Louis Cardinals. And that's a pristine job. That is a job a lot of people want because of the tradition in St. Louis. And I think Marmol can kind of be that bridge between the tradition, the traditional baseball values. I agree with what they're saying in all this and the new part of the game. I think Marmol, I think is going to be a good hire. I, I you know, and again, the, the narrative and the, and the difference of opinions between Shilton and Mosellock and, and all these things, it, it doesn't go away for me. I, I, I still am not super thrilled with how Mike Schultz situation uh, finished out that it still doesn't sit super well with me. Um, and there definitely is a question. I talked about this a lot last week, a question of why would you hire internally when the philosophical differences are there? You would think that the staff has a similar philosophical mindset, but also, you, you've got you, you still got two different people at the helm, or two different people in that clubhouse that have different philosophies at some level. Doesn't matter how long you coach somebody, you could still have different philosophies at some at some level. And apparently, the differences between Mike Schultz and Oliver Marmol were enough to get Schilt, uh let go, and for the Cardinals to hire Ali Marmol. I think that it, it's an interesting way to go about it. 
to, to fire somebody just because you have a difference and hire somebody that is quote unquote more suited to agree with you. Uh, you can make that argument after the old guy had been winning, the, the former guy had been winning. Uh, but nevertheless, Marmol is the new manager of the St. Louis Cardinals and I'm very excited for him. He, he was very excited. Um, I think that it's an interesting point that they, they talked about a lot what was his age. He's 35 years old, born in 1986. Um, and, and he had this kind of to, to talk about how his age, how it, it's not a factor. And this was a quote from his age is not a factor in managing. And this was a quote in response to, to a question of how do you manage guys that have been in the league longer than you? <laughs> and Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina specifically. Um, he said, quote, if the player knows that you care and the player knows that you're prepared and you have your thoughts organized when you approach them and, and you can make them better, they listen. The communication seems to be a key for Oliver Marmol, especially when you're communicating with guys like Adam Weiner and Yadier Molina, who, let's be honest with ourselves, know what they're doing. They've been around the block once or twice. They've they've, they've been in a, a clubhouse before. They, they know exactly what they're doing, okay? It, it might be hard for a 35-year-old to, to go and, and coach and lead a 39, 40-year-old player. It, it's difficult, but I think Marmol took the right approach in saying, my age doesn't matter. My leadership skills matter. And that, that, that's how I'm going to lead them with my skills, not thinking about my age. I think that, that that's the right um, right mindset to have for Oliver Marmol's standpoint. And for, like I said earlier, he, he's talked to some of the core players, Molina, Wainwright, Goldie, and Arenado. Support has been there. And that, that, that's that's a key, key point, that, that the players are supportive and the players are ready to play for him. Because I think that that is that is a key when you're talking about managing at the major league level. It's not necessarily about working with mechanics at the managers or level or, or things of that nature. These guys are are, are going to know what they do for the most part. It's how can you motivate a player? And, Mike, and Oliver Marmol seems to be able to motivate players. Uh, or seems to have the players' motivation as we stand. Um, a good question was asked to Marmol as to what questions he needed answered as to the, the clarity from the front office um, and, and did he agree with what the front office did. He said that he had good conversation with Mo and others to get clarity on what the organization wanted. And after those initial conversations, there were little questions after that. So, uh, you know, whatever questions he had for, for, for wanting clarity apparently were answered. Um, I think that that's, that's a good thing. You, you want a manager and a front office on the same page. For whatever reason, Mike Schultz and John Mosellock were not on the same page. For whatever reason, analytics, what, whatever it might be. Oliver Marmol and Mike and John Mosellock do seem to be on the same page. And that, that's that's it's good for continuity. That that is good for, for the team and good for the organization. Now it's up to Marmol to go out there and win. Because like I said, he's got a championship mindset. Anything less than a championship going forward, that's what they prepare for. Anything less than that is a disappointment. It's a championship attitude. I got a couple more things I want to talk about with Marmol, um, but I'm running a little bit long on time, so I got to take my my, my second break here. Uh, so I want to talk about lineup constructions. Uh, what well, he talked about that, as well as his relationship with Jeff Albert, because that's an interesting point that a lot of people want to talk about. And then, like I mentioned, I'll share some of your thoughts that you have shared with me through Twitter and Instagram, uh, as well as an email. So, uh, but first, I want to take my second break, and I'm getting kind of hungry. It's a little bit a little bit uh, before lunch here, and I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to eat before I work out tonight? Well, I'm going to eat some Built Bars because I got some Built Bars waiting for me. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar in the business. If you've listened for a long time, you've been telling you this for a long time. I hope you bought some Built Bars. I hope you agree with me because they've got incredible flavors for everybody. Coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate. They have something for everybody. And if you can't think of which one you want to get, I recommend the double chocolate. Or you get a mixed box. We'll get two of each of the nine flavors. These bars are tasty as well as they are healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein in each bar. So that calories range from 130 to 180. 4 to 5 grams of sugar. 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors. All tasty. All healthy. Order today. Get whatever flavor you like. Get a mixed box. They're tasty. They're healthy. And you can save some money with the promo code LOCKED15 when you order at BuiltBar.com. LOCKED15. L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. Get you 50% off your next order at BuiltBar.com. Get yourself some of the best tasting protein bars in the business today and save money with the promo code LOCKED15. All right, let's get into a couple more quotes here from Oliver Marmol and then share what you guys have to say before I finish up the show. Uh, talking about lineup constructions and, and the, the decision-making process with, with, the manage, with the front office staff and how to go about game planning a game. Uh, many decisions are prepared prior. Lineup constructions... He talked about optimizing them as much as possible. Uh, some continuity to the lineup, for sure, is what he was talking about, but also they will be allowed to optimize when possible um, for, for the day starting pitcher, how a guy is feeling, how a guy is going. I think this is the way to do it. You know, I, I, you have to be able to optimize and adapt. 
yes, you want some continuity. Yes, you want some stability in your lineup. Like, yeah, you're going to have Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt hitting in the middle. Or you're going to have, or if, if you want to go about it, you're going to have Paul Goldschmidt hitting second. You're going to have Tyler O'Neill hitting. You're going to have those continuity things. But maybe if you got a left in the mound, you move Bader up to sixth instead of batting him eighth. Or you move him up to fifth instead of batting him sixth. You, you, you do have to have some movement in the lineup to, to optimize, as the, what the word that Ali Manuel had said. And I think that, that that is the sweet spot. I think that that might have been one of the things that they want to change from Mike Schilt because Mike Schilt took a long time to change the lineup uh, early in this season to, to move Dylan Carlson. Uh, from that top spot and then move Goldschmidt from the second to third. He took a long time to move. I think Marmol might be a little bit quicker to move a lineup construction, just like he was a might be quicker to make a change in the bullpen when he sees necessary uh, and, and use the, like I said, the combination of, of an eye test and analytics. Because the analytics might say, uh, take somebody out, but Marmol sees that he's, he's going good, so he's going to leave him in. Analytics might say to, to bring somebody in, and he says, no, he's not, not looking good, so I'm going to take him out. So I think it's a combination of that. So I think that optimization is a key for Omar Mal because that's a word he used frequently. Uh, and then the question was asked, his relationship between himself and Jeff Albert. And I'm running a little bit short on time, so I'll expand on this a little bit more on tomorrow's show. He said that he's known Albert for a long time. They're good friends. Uh, he wants to possibly improve the messaging, but he did say that his philosophies align with that of Jeff Albert's in terms of hitting and being adaptable and optimization and all these things. It's interesting because Moselak has been very clear that Albert is hitting coach. Um, and again, it's, it's un- unclear as to whether or not they're going to have a um, have him back, but it's almost all but guaranteed. They hope to have the staff finalized by the end of the World Series. Interesting that Marmol has a good relationship with Albert because you, you would think that maybe the differences between Mike Schilt and John Moselak were not just analytical, but they were also about their relationship and the thoughts on Jeff Albert. Speculation, yeah, sure, I understand that. Uh, but at the same time, it, it makes you wonder. So I'll expand on that a little bit more. But I do want to share your your responses on the Twitter and Instagram before I get out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So tomorrow, I'll be previewing a little bit of the World Series. I'll have some Locked On Insider clips coming your way, as well as talk a little bit more about Ali Marmol news and uh, Jeff Albert as well. So this was these are re- re- replies to the tweet and Locked On Cardinals at LO underscore Cardinals that was tweeted last night after the news broke. Uh, Hunter Landstrom at H Landstrom 01 says, makes you question the philosophical differences reasoning for firing Schilt. Absolutely. Uh, th- this is definitely make, makes you question that. And for, for good reason, I think that you can kind of infer as I talked about what those differences are, but definitely a question um, at Arctic beach, Pittsburgh. I can't say what the last uh, part of your name is here, but uh, they, they say didn't want an outsider retried. So if it's not skip, it has to be the clubhouse and coaches. I'm for him. I'm good. A couple of typos, I think, in there, but thanks for sharing your response. So it seems to be that, that Pittsburgh, or at Arctic Beach, is happy with the Moselock or with the uh, Moselock decision to hire Marmol. Uh, at Talking Redbird says, low risk, low reward. This is what I talked about um, a little bit. I, I, I kind of disagree. I think there is a high reward uh, to, to keep Marmol in a, in a winning sense and to keep the Cardinals in a winning attitude with Marmol. So I, I understand where you're coming from there because uh, the reward could be low but I think it will be high. So three responses as well to share from the Instagram leader underscore WX lateral move while burning a faithful and successful member of the organization. I can see where you're coming from. Just like talking, talking Redbirds. I think that Mike Schilt didn't burn any bridges. Obviously the Cardinals burnt a bridge with Mike Schilt firing him. That happens. Most times things are fired. Uh, but I understand that the lateral move thought process in terms of keeping it in the same staff. But as I've talked about, I do think that overall Marwell is going to be different than, than Schilt. Uh, I, I think that mo- the front office would not have made this decision if they thought they were going to get Schilt 2.0, in my opinion. Uh, Shane Dunk 20 says, I'm okay with it, only because of the high praise Schilt gave him in his press conference. That's a great point, Shane. I think, you know, Marmol was the first person that, if I remember correctly, that Schilt named um, as, as wanting to give gratitude and praise to. The very first person. That's huge. Uh, and Schilt obviously thinks the world of, of, of Marmol, and Marmol said that he has talked to Schilt in the past a couple of days about it. Um, I, the, the, res- the mutual respect there is clear. Uh, so I, I agree with that point. It's a good point made by Shane Dunk 20 on Instagram. Uh, Matthew Hunter 1128 says, interesting. Hopefully he isn't another Schilt. That's a good comment to end on from the Instagram standpoint, because that is 100% uh, correct. Um, and then I have one more email to, to share from, from Kevin Gates. Some of my friends are thinking it's a diversity hire. Thought never crossed my mind. It's a comment for another time, whether I, Oliver Marmol is qualified that, 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 that period. Um, however, if he does think like Shilton, the club should be decent hands. I hope he does well, Kevin. Um, 
you know, Marmol is the first uh, manager of color. Katie, we pointed that out in the Cardinals history. So yes, it, he is the first, but I do think that Marmol is getting this for his qualifications more so than, than anything else. But uh, I do think that he's, that the Cardinals are in good hands with, under Marmol. I think he's going to do well. And I think that well, time will tell, but I'm more okay with this move than I thought it was going to be. Cause I've talked about last last week or so that, I, man, I really don't want it to be internal. It makes no sense, but Again, this could just be me looking at this brand new shiny object, uh, but I, I I understand what the Cardinals are doing now, and I understand from the comments that uh, Mozilak has made uh, and, and the questions that were asked. There were good questions asked in the Zoom today. Uh, I'm I'm happier with this move than I thought I would be. I really am. So we'll talk more about this move tomorrow. Um, run along on time as well as talk about the relationship with Jeff Albert and purely the World Series because the World Series is coming up as the Braves and Astros are battling um, for the world championship trophy. So be sure to follow me on Twitter for daily Cardinals coverage at LJ fastball. If you're watching on the YouTube, that's right here. Follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Cardinals. Uh, be sure you can respond to things and swipe up on stories to be featured just like that on shows, as well as email the show at locked on cards at demo.com. Uh, be sure to listen to locked on MLB prospects. Arm Layton and I are in conversation to trying to get him on the show to talk Cardinal prospects. So go listen to his show at a, a historic week last week. Um, on Locked on MLB Prospects. So until I talk to you guys tomorrow, more about Marmol, more about the World Series, be sure to stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic rest of your day.